This particular shot came with a whole bunch of challenges. We wanted it to look really dangerous and like she'd have to be super careful to not lose an arm in here or something. So in the writing phase, we decided, hey, bear traps. That would make it kind of difficult. We bought some small kind of foothold traps on eBay, and I ended up making some hot glue and cardboard models to kind of look like bigger bear traps that would be more dangerous. And once we filmed the shot, it really didn't look that impressive or scary. You could barely even see them. So, in the post-production phase, I turned to Blender to see if I could add some more sharp metal things to make it look a little bit more dangerous. Now, modeling the bear traps and tracking them into the footage turned out to be fairly straightforward, but the big challenge was the lighting phase. Of course, I wanted them to look photorealistic and not distractingly CG, and one of the biggest hurdles to getting something photorealistic looking is the lighting. And that's when this gets complicated. Firstly, the main source of light is kind of the light at the end of the tunnel, and our actress here is casting some pretty dynamic moving shadows over where we'd want our CG traps to be. So I found some pretty consistent spots that I could track on her, and once I tracked those, I went into the reconstruction tab and linked empties to tracks. That way, in the 3D viewport, I was able to parent some objects to those tracks and kind of get a dynamic shadow casting blob thing which in the outliner panel, you can see, is called the chicken blimp. For those objects and the object properties, I've gone under ray visibility, and I've made sure camera is not checked. That way they're just casting shadows, but they're not actually showing up in the render. And of course, there's the actual light itself, which ended up being an emission plane, and that just gave everything a kind of nice green rim light. Now you get another layer of complicatedness when the flare actually lights up, because not only is the position of the light source changing, but the intensity is changing as well. I found a point in the scene where the light is hitting the wall, and I figured that'd be kind of a good representation of how bright the flare is and how it flickers. So I tracked that point, and using Blender's 2D stabilization, I rendered that little area out as just a small 512 by 512 image sequence. Then it's a fairly simple matter of adjusting the nodes on an area lamp. I just took that image sequence, put it into a color ramp, into an emission, and I have the emission turned up to 6 at this point. Just make sure with your image sequence node that you have the frame set and auto refresh checked, and that usually does the trick. Okay, so that solved the problem of figuring out the intensity. Then I just needed to make sure it was coming from the right direction. And for that, I just tracked Lois's hand, and then once again went to reconstruction, link empty to track, and then I parented the area light to the track. And of course this took some trial and error, but it gave a pretty good approximation of the intensity and directionality of the flare so that it could light the CG elements. Another trick that I keep coming back to is using these looping smoke assets. And you can see in this shot, I've used them kind of as some atmospheric add-ons to shape the light and add some more depth. And I just find them super handy. If you'd like to get your hands on some of these, there's a link in the description for those. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Cheers.